Okay, so let's talk about this alternative migration strategy. But before we go too deep into that, first I want to talk about why, in my experience, why migrations fail. Now, in my experience, and from talking to different people, two of the biggest reasons for failure to migrate an AngularJS application is that there's always other baggage to deal with, and this other concept I call clean house. And I'm going to explain what both of these concepts mean. I'm gonna start off with other baggage. So we don't build our Angular applications in isolation. Typically, an Angular application, be it an Angular JS or an Angular application, use a whole number of other third-party modules or dependencies that we use in order to build our application. Now, in Angular JS, we use a whole lot more dependencies, in my experience, than we did with Angular. And when we're migrating from AngularJS to Angular, some of these modules were then absorbed and some of them weren't. So for instance, in our AngularJS application on the screen here, we're using UI Router, and just the same as our application that we're using, that we migrated in this course, we're just gonna absorb that into Angular uh, 5 with the Angular Router. And also we might be using some things like Angular Strap in AngularJS, we just, we just drop it or use something else in Angular 5. But then we have other modules out there, other, other dependencies, namely usually the UI dependencies. So for instance, Bootstrap. Now you probably can't tell from the presentation, but the two Bootstrap logos there are actually slightly different. That's because the logo on the left-hand side for JS is actually for Bootstrap 2, and the logo on the right for 5 is actually for Bootstrap 4. So sometimes when you migrate from AngularJS to Angular, you also wanna update some of these dependent libraries, okay? But the problem is we're not running two separate applications. In hybrid mode, we're running one application and both those applications, or that one application is sharing the same global namespace, okay? The same, sharing the same memory on the computer. So therefore they have to share their baggage. And specifically in this instance, you might be able to share Angular strap and UI routes because they're not clashing with each other, but the bootstraps will clash with each other. So bootstrap two will clash with bootstrap four because it'll just overwrite stuff in bootstrap four. So we can't use two different modules which share the global namespace um, in, in our hybrid mode. So it's very difficult then to migrate your UI library, for instance, when you're migrating AngularJS to modern Angular which kind of leaves us with you know, some issues. We do definitely want to migrate or have our Angular 5 application using Bootstrap 4. I'm just using Bootstrap as an example here. This applies to anything which uses a global namespace. But yeah, in our AngularJS application, we might be using Bootstrap 2, but then when we migrate to Angular 5, we want to use Bootstrap 4. What are our options? Well, our first option is just to keep the baggage the same, okay? So we don't bother migrating to Angular, to Bootstrap 4, and we migrate our Angular JS application to Angular 5. We now have an Angular 5 application that's using Bootstrap 2. Pretty depressing a situation to be in. And it never really kind of felt right there. You were migrating from a legacy framework to a modern framework with a legacy UI framework attached to it. So what are some of the other options? Well, one of the things we can do is first migrate to Bootstrap 4 in our Angular JS application, and then when we migrate, to Angular 5 or whatever the modern version of Angular is right now, then we would have a Bootstrap 4 Angular 5 application. Now that's great, but then you're essentially writing a lot of throwaway code in your Angular JS application. You're just migrating to 4, you're changing all of your directives, all of your templates, and you're just gonna throw away most of that stuff when you eventually migrate to 5. So it's just a lot of throwaway work there. Yes, that never felt good as well. What we ideally want in a solution is as we're migrating from Angular JS to Angular 5, at the same time, we want to be able to migrate our dependent libraries. So we want to migrate from Bootstrap 2 to Bootstrap 4. But this in the ng upgrade mode with the hybrid module approach is actually unfortunately very difficult to do. So the other, other issue is clean house. And this is the second issue I think that migrations sometimes fail. And that's because you have to clean house before you migrate. What do I mean by that? So when AngularJS first came out, we had no idea how to architect a good application. We used to use controllers instead of components. We, in my AngularJS application that I migrated across, we were using controllers and we weren't using components. 
We relied on scope inheritance instead of controller as syntax. I gave an example of the form in the previous lecture where we just use scope inheritance a lot in our AngularJS application. And again, we might use scope.watch far too much. We might be using emit and broadcast far too much. And these are all things that make migrating to Angular much, much harder because these don't have direct analogies. You essentially have to rewrite that code to not be that way in order to start the process of migrating to Angular. And the way I describe it to people today is imagine if you were to build an AngularJS application today with everything we now know about how best to architect an AngularJS application. That's where you need to be before you start your migration journey. It's very, very, very difficult to migrate from AngularJS to Angular and at the same time be fixing architectural issues in your AngularJS application. You have to have fixed them all beforehand before you migrate. So if you're here in your AngularJS application, before you start your migration journey, you need to get to there. And that's what step one, step two, step three, step four, in my approach, in my step-by-step -step migration approach, really talks about. And depending on where you're coming from, that can be a lot of effort or a little bit of effort. And for some people, it's a lot of effort. And that's because, well, most of us are staring at really complex architectures. If you're working on an AngularJS application today, it means it's had years and years and years of investment. And it's not so simple to refactor all that complexity and bad architecture out of your application. It's not so simple. So investing all of that time in your legacy AngularJS application just to get it to a state to start migrating to Angular can sometimes seem well, at best, is just depressing, and at worst, impossible. And can sometimes seem it can sometimes seem that just rewriting everything from scratch is a better alternative. And sometimes it really is a better alternative. Not always, but sometimes. So that's why I wanted to find a solution. I wanted to find a solution for those people out there who are dealing with really, for really challenging Angular JS applications that are perhaps really old or just built with really poor architecture, and, and you're just stuck with them. How do you? Is there a solution? to help you migrate those over to Angular. And, and there is. I call it the alternative migration strategy or the iframe migration strategy. And it's halfway between a rewrite from scratch and a migration. And I also have to say, I didn't come up with the solution. It was actually my replacement at one of my last engagements for a client. Um, after I'd patiently explained all the work I'd done over the last six months to bring a client's app to the point where we were using Angular, he suggested another much simpler method using iframes. So it's quite simple. We create a modern Angular SPA application. So this is an Angular SPA application. This is the host application. And when we need to, we just iframe in the legacy Angular JS application. That's it. That's simple. So my first reaction was to strongly object. Iframes felt dumb, like a real handover from the birth of the web. But after giving it some thought, I eventually felt dumb for not thinking of it before. Let me show you a demo of this application. So this is the demo application, which demonstrates the method I'm talking about. Now, what we're looking at right now is a Bootstrap 4, Angular 4 host application. You can see it's using, well, it has to use hash-based routing at the top, and we're looking at a route called Angular. So the Angular application. And when I click Angular JS, well, you see the the root change to Angular JS, and you kind of have to believe me that this is an Ang this is a Bootstrap two and Angular one JS one point six application. Maybe you can tell from the UI that it's Bootstrap two. So if I click back and forward, so when I click Angular JS, this is actually an iframe, an iframed in application. This is actually the host application. So if I inspect element, okay, there's the app root, there's the header at the top. And there's the content, here's the router outlet, and this is the, the blue counter uh, there is that this is, an, this is being handled essentially by Angular. Okay, so you can see there's no iframing in happening here right now. But then when we click on Angular JS, we're now requesting something that only, we haven't migrated across yet. And you can see here I'm using an app, iframe gets injected in, and then that literally is injecting in an iframe of our old AngularJS application. And you can see here, we can also, if I change some value in AngularJS application, when I look at my Angular application, I see the same value, and it's essentially sharing state 
between both of these applications. This isn't one application. This is two completely separate applications where we can route between one or the other and we can share state and, uh, and, and perform activities. Now, what I'm going to show you is not a complete solution. All I'm going to be showing you is an idea. Many people have taken this as inspiration for something else that they've built, which kind of takes some of the ideas to help them perform their migration in their way. So again, this isn't a fully fledged solution. This is just something to give you some hope, some idea for something that might be able to help you if you have a particularly challenging application. So again, we're running two completely separate applications in this mode. We have a legacy AngularJS application and we have a modern uh, Angular application. And both of them are running in completely separate applications. They're completely separate tabs, one just getting iframed into another. So they're not sharing the same memory. And that means that they don't have to share baggage. So our Angular 5 application can still be using whatever modules it wants to use without any fear of it clashing with our AngularJS application. And there's also no need to really change our AngularJS application. It can remain exactly as it is. You don't need to upgrade it. You don't need to change any of its architecture. It can remain exactly as it is. And you can start building or migrating across to your modern Angular application. To do that, we have to, to basically have deal with two issues. And one of them is root ownership, and the other one is shared state. Let's first cover root ownership. So how we migrate is, imagine this is an AngularJS application, we've got different pages. And what we do is we first create an Angular host application. That is our root of our application. And then we're essentially migrating one root at a time, so one URL at a time, like so. So as we start migrating our application, we're basically gonna migrate one root at a time, then once everything is migrated across, then we just have, when well, we just ignore the AngularJS application and we just got an Angular application. But kind of how do we do that? How do we handle some of the unique issues with this? Because they're both of these applications have to work side by side. And really, what do I mean when I say Angular starts taking over? So imagine this is your Angular uh, JS application and that's our UI router for our Angular JS application. We're using, we just have one state which is that state in the state provider. And in our Angular application at the bottom, we have the, the routes that we, how we specify an Angular application. What we're doing when we migrate a route from AngularJS to Angular is we're literally going to delete it from our AngularJS UI router configuration, and we're going to add it to our Angular root configuration. So now we've kind of, but now we're really going to be having kind of one pseudo hybrid application where some URLs, we want AngularJS to handle it, and some URLs, we want Angular to handle it. Who owns a root, Angular or AngularJS? And how do we communicate between those different routes? That is the key to this solution. So for instance, if, you're, if we're viewing an AngularJS page and we click on something where we want to view another AngularJS page, then there's nothing we need to do. Essentially, the UI router configuration will handle that, and then the AngularJS hand engine handles a route, and we're basically just migrating from one, the iframe doesn't change, we're just migrating within the iframe from one route to another. So there's nothing we need to do there. And imagine we've, we're, we've got an Angular, we'll click on an Angular page, and we want to migrate to another Angular page. Well, the same thing happens, we're just clicking within an Angular application, and then we go to another route in an Angular application. Nothing really needs to be done specially to handle that. The real use cases or the real challenges are these ones. So imagine if you've clicked on an Angular, a click a link in an Angular page, and we haven't migrated that across yet. So that is actually still handled by your AngularJS application. How, how do we deal with that? 